What is happening guys, episode two. We're gonna backtrack a little bit because we are a bit farther ahead than usual. We're gonna show you how we got here, what we did to get here. I have very good news, very good news. Made my day yesterday. I get a phone call from the neighbors, allowing us to use their lot. So we have a third of their lot we can use all the way up to that tree and back. We can use it for storage of our trailer, we can use it for storage of material because as soon as we start framing, we're gonna need that. On top of that, I am gonna leave the garage floors completely empty. We're gonna have our footings done, but we're not gonna have the actual finished floor. That way I can try to store some material in there as well. So we'll have a little bit of space in here, but let's backtrack just a little bit and show you guys how we got to where we're at now. We are nearly formed out right now. We're gonna work on our inside forms today. Have some fun with it. If you're new here, subscribe button down below. Let's get to it. What we're trying to do is clear out this area here to give us some space to work. We're not going to form up the garage just yet. We're going to work on the main envelope up top, all the living space first. That's gonna be so much nicer to work in. All that open space over there. This guy walking up right here is a geotechnical engineer. He specializes in dirt. He is required to do a soils report and check our footings prior to us being able to form the foundation. Backstory real quick, we got quite a bit of rain before we started this project. He found an area in the back that was pretty wet he wasn't too happy with it, he gave us two options. He could dig it up until it was dry. We knew that wouldn't be an option just due to how much rain we got prior to starting this project, or we could run a compactor through it, let it sit for a couple of days. So for the rest of the day, we dug out the garage in the front, and then at the end of the day, we ran a compactor through all of our footings. Luckily, this all happened on a Friday, so he was able to come back out on a Saturday. Footings had dried out a little bit. He was happy with what he saw. He signed off on our soils report and gave us the green light to form the foundation.
Nice because it goes to a smaller area. Yeah, you can see it get closer and closer. Run through and check all of them. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Since we're involved from the beginning, we get to make changes that make our job a lot easier as the framer. The little changes that I'm talking about are really fairly simple, but most people don't think about it. When it comes time to doing our zip system sheathing, we want it to run down flush with foundation, meaning that our sheet runs continuous with foundation instead of having that half inch hanging over. So what we're doing to make sure that our shear runs down flush with foundation is extending the slab this way and that way, three eighths of an inch on both sides, so three quarter overall. That'll make up for our sheathing and it can run down flush. From there, we've got a pretty cool flashing detail. Instead of having the metal flashing that you see people do quite a bit just before they do siding, we're gonna do the liquid flashing from Zip System as well, all the way along the base there to seal off the foundation to the wall. We're not gonna be using any house wrap on this build because we're using Zip System. Everything's going to be taped. We're gonna be using the liquid flash and the stretch tape on all of our windows as well. Let's talk about some quick changes we made over here to the actual stem wall. So this form right here represents top of stem wall. We're gonna have a wall right here. This is gonna be garage floor way down there. We're going to have three steps going up from the garage floor up into finished floor there. Finished floor for our garage is way down here. They had it drawn up on the plans that this stem wall was gonna run through continuous all the way out to the front. What that does is gives us a nasty curb appeal from the back there because when you look at the house from the back, you're gonna see the two garage doors and instead of having six to eight inches of concrete, and then your siding starts, you're gonna have a foot and a half before your siding starts. It would look terrible. So we got in touch with structural engineer to make sure that it was okay. We dropped a foot right here, allowing for a very small amount of concrete to be seen from the back there. Doesn't affect us much, it's not gonna change anything. Only thing that will be different is our studs will be a little bit bigger here. We will have to custom cut a few of them, but really, it's no big deal. It's gonna make the place look a lot better as well. We have a small landing out here with a couple of steps, so this has to be this high. We can't drop the stem wall the whole way, but we can eight feet out. That's gonna make this place a heck of a lot nicer. It's little things like this that we get to plan for ahead of time to make sure that the build goes smooth and looks awesome. So now that you guys are up to date on how we got to where we are today, let's go ahead and get to it. Thank you. 
Put in the hole, see your line within your tie fit. No, 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 look at me. Yeah, we're going to pot. We're getting high, T-bone. It's me. Alright. I don't want to be that high. It's too high. <laughs> So we've got our outside form, we've got our envelope done all the way around the place, two by 12 forms, we're prepped. We're going to do this in two pours. We're gonna have an inside form as well. We're gonna pour the footings all the way along the place, our six inch footing, and then we're gonna come back and pour finished floor. In order for us to form up the inside, we have to be six inches away from the outside form perfectly. Now you can measure off each one to a stake, put the stake in the ground, hope it works out. It takes a lot of time, way too much involved. We use a block, seven and a half overall, six inch for our footing, inch and a half for our outside form. You put this up against the outside form, put a stake on the backside, pound it in, and then you put your two by four, two by six, whatever your inside form is on the inside. After that, you're perfect. All your stakes work out great. Works perfect every time. Footings cleaned out once again now that we're completely formed up and we started dropping rebar in. We got rebar dropped in the back here all the way through and as I showed you guys when we started digging the footings the rebar is going to change depending on what the footing is specced out for. Some sections back here have two bars top and bottom. The rest of them have one bar top and bottom and then the ones out front have three top and bottom. But we're going through right now getting everything cut getting everything laid in here and prepped. After that, we'll start forming the inside, getting everything hung. Then from there, it's time to get plumbers and electricians in here to do their scope. We're ready to pour this thing. We've got rebar going down. I'm cutting everything based off the plans, kind of just prefabbing up all of our corners. With our number four bar, we have a 24 inch minimum lap, meaning that from one piece to the next, we have to lap 24. Therefore, what I'm doing on the majority of these corners is just running out and then doing a two foot bend on the end, tying in from there and running the other way. We have all of our bar in up top though. We wanted to do that prior to doing our two by four inside form. That way we didn't have to try to put rebar with bends in it in between the two. So now that we've got all the bar up there, we're gonna go ahead and start doing our two by four banding on the inside of all those forms. Let's hop up there, get the saws going, get that taken care of. I don't like how quick they are. Scuttling. I'm cool with salamanders because they're little and slow. And you know those little blue bellies bite harder than the alligator lizards? Yes. You know how many alligator lizards and lizards in general I've had thrown at me? I love spiders. But, I mean, I'm not going to be that scared of them, but I, I don't like them.
So you guys know I'm an advocate for figuring out a jig and making it work. I have a nine inch piece here with a six on the back. We've got six inch in here, inch and a half for both sides. And from there you can put your cleats on. No pull on a tape, no guessing. Every time it's perfect. So we've got the two by 12 here on the outside, our outside forms. We're kicked off all the way around this place. It looks awesome. We've got our two by four inside here. What we're going to do is pour this in two pours. Three actually if you count the garage floors. We'll pour up to here. We have to set all of our anchor bolts still. We have to tie all of our rebar still. It's not gonna take us all that long, but it's still prep work we have to do. But we'll have our rebar tied in here. We're gonna put all of our anchor bolts, all of our hold downs. I'm gonna show you guys the process of that. That's something that a lot of people get wrong, especially if you're not a framer. You don't understand how far off you need to have your hold down when you have a six by six on the corner. I'm gonna show you guys everything I know regarding it, and we're gonna run through it. But that's a wrap, guys. Tomorrow we're gonna tie up some rebar, get this place looking much more complete. We still have some foreman to do out in the garage but there's really not a whole lot left. Next episode, we're gonna go over what spread footings are as we form up the front of this place. Talk to you a little bit more about that along with tie-in rebar. It's gonna be fun. Hope you guys are ready for that. If you are new here, subscribe button is down below. If you have any comments, drop them in the comments below. I'll get to you as soon as possible. I'll see you guys next time. Bang on. Whoa!